I mentioned to Mr. Crum that I had lived in that northern border town long enough to have been told on various occasions that a guest could visit Mrs. Pike just so many times before he discovered one day that he could never leave her again. Such talk, I continued, was to some extent substantiated by what was found in the ruins of Mrs. Pike's house after the fire. It seemed there were rooms all over the house, and even in the furthest corners of its vast cellar regions where the charred remains of human bodies were found. To all appearances, given the intensely destructive nature of that conflagration, each of the incinerated corpses was in outlandish clothing, as if the whole structure of the house were inhabited by a death In light of all the stories we had heard in the town, no one bothered to remark how unlikely it was, how preposterous even, that none of the lodgers at Mrs. Pike's house had managed to escape. Nevertheless, as I disclosed to Crumb, the body of Mrs. Pike herself was never found, despite a most diligent search that was conducted by Mrs. Glim. Yet even as I brought all of these facts to his attention as we sat on that park bench, Crumb's mind seemed to have been drifted off to other realms. More than ever, he looked as if he belonged in a hospital. Finally, he spoke, asking me to confirm what I had said about the absence of Mrs. Pike's body among those found in the ashes left by the fire. I confirmed the statement I had made, begging him to consider the place and the circumstances which were the source of this and all my other remarks, as well as his own, that were made that morning in early spring. Remember your words, I said to Crumb. Which words were those, he asked. Deliriously preposterous, I replied, trying to draw out the sound of each syllable, as if to imbue them with some actual sense, or at least a dramatic force of some kind. You were only a pawn, I said. You and all those others were nothing but pawns. In a struggle between forces you could not conceive. Your impulses were not your own. They were as artificial as Mrs. Pike's wooden hand.